Hi everyone, this is Carlos with the Emacs Science Support Team here with another tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at L1 periodogram, searching for planetary signatures in radio velocity time series with a sparse recovery technique. So if you're new to the world of exoplanets, one of the techniques we use to find exoplanets is called radio velocity or looking for the wobble effect. That being when a planet orbits a star, its gravity tugs on it and puts it out, out of its center of gravity creating this difference in radio velocity. And so, to get started, we are going to click on the Jupyter Notebook button. That will take us here. If we're patient, it'll open up a Jupyter Notebook interface for us to work with. While we let this load, what we are going to be doing is proving this paper to be true. This is Lavis et al. 2016, where they discovered three Neptune mass exoplanets with radio velocity techniques. And so we will be looking for these wobbles that the planets are creating. And let's go ahead and get started. Here we have a bunch of different notebooks that they gave us to work with. We're going to start with the first one, periodogram underscore tutorial underscore one. Double click, that'll open it up. Now let's close this up a little bit. Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to learn how to use the L1 periodogram. And here in this uh, first section, it gives us kind of the rundown on how this works. What we really want to focus in here are on these three steps. So first we're going to load in the data. In the class L1P underscore class, we will define the frequency grid, the noise model, and the signal model, and then we will launch the computation of the L1 periodogram. If you want to know more about how this works specifically, you can read these three paragraphs, where it tells us that it is similar to the long scraggle periodogram with some differences. First things first, we will import our data, and they provide data for us to work with. We will import these important programs and of course NumPy and Matplotlib. Now what we're going to do here is we are going to define some variables for us to work with. Okay so step one load the data in the class. So to do this we will use our L1P underscore class where we will feed it T and Y where t is a measurement times and y is a time series to analyze. We're going to give our star a name, hd69830, as well as our data sets and the offsets. Now step two, we are going to define the model. So mathematically, this is our model. Big takeaways from this is we first need to define the frequency grid then the noise model, and then the vectors assumed to be in the model. We will call these MH0. So this will be where our false positives may come from. Because there might be vectors that are known to be in the data, such as an offset, a trend, or a linear activity model. And we want to include those in the default model. So here we are. We define our different sigmas seen here. V will be our covariance matrices where we use these previously defined parameters. And then to set the model we're going to use this method. So we'll, all we'll do is use that C that we defined before up above here. And we'll use the dot set underscore model to set our model. Here we want to search for frequencies up to 1.5 cycles a day, which is equal to 3 times pi. Hence the 3 times pi, V will be V, and MH so will be our offsets. To plot it, simply use plot underscore input data, and this is our raw data. As you can see, if there was no planets, all these data points would be here across the zero, but they're not. There's definitely some wobbling going on, so we know that there 
there's a good chance that we can discover some planets. So step three, we're going to run the actual L1 periodogram. So this is where the meat is, if you will. So here we're going to define a couple things. The numerical method that will be used to solve will be the basis pursuit model. And then once the L1 period periodogram is computed, we want to determine whether the peaks are significant. And below you will see that we have a couple of different peaks. And we want to make sure that we are looking at the ones that are planets and determining which ones aren't planets. So here, set the methods to evaluate the significance. FAPS, Evidence Laplace. So these will be the fossil alarm probabilities and the Laplace approximation of the Bayesian evidence. So here, we set our priors. Simple as this, the numerical method will be LARS, significance evaluation method, FAP, and evidence Laplace. Here it gives us how fast all these ran, which is extremely fast. And here is our first plot. So what we're seeing here, we have the coefficient amplitude on the y and the period on the x. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 peaks. And we know from reading the literature that 1, 2, 3 are exoplanets and the rest are noise. Now, how do we get rid of that, right? So to do that, we're going to come down here. Here, this outputs section gives you a better idea of how these outputs came to be. Basically, we compared the signal of 8.664D plus MHO linear model versus just the MHO linear model. Then for the next one, we use the signal at 8.664D plus the signal at 31.637d plus the MHO linear model versus the signal for 8.664d and MHO linear model and so on. So we want to determine which are planets and which are the false positives. So to do that we need to change what we first assume. Here we are going to check that there are no hints of planets with a period of less than one one day and then we will recompute the figure on a grid excluding the aliases and this is how you do it so we're going to use c dot update underscore model we'll update the omega max and then here we're going to change our prior this plot output equals false that's just telling us that we don't want to save our plot because we don't this is just a tutorial and then we will go ahead and plot here the significant values equals log 10 faps telling you just give us the good ones and here we are you can see the ones we had here are starting to disappear now we're down to three four five peaks but remember we know these to be our actual planets so now we're going to change the noise model as well so to do that we're going to come down here redefine our sigmas and our tau we will redefine our model update the model set to v equal to v red which is this updated model and now when we plot here we are one two three exoplanets at peaks of 8.6 31.6 and 201 these being the periods if we go to the literature we can see that this system has three Neptune mass planets with periods of 8.67, 31.6, and 197 days, which is pretty dang close to what we got. So that is L1 periodogram. Uh, it's a super useful tool and it was easy to use. Um, for any questions, comments, or concerns, you can comment below or follow us on Twitter at ExoplanetModels. Thank you. Peace.